Kiev is ready to withdraw tanks from the separation line in Donbass, Ukraine's oligarch president Petro Poroshenko told a press briefing in Kharkiv on Thursday. We're ready to pull back tanks today to avoid shelling, the UN IAN news agency quotes him as saying. Wow! Kiev is ready to pull back tanks on March 27th? It is 20 days later than it had to be done according to the Minsk agreements. We hope it won't be interpreted like the violating of the Minsk agreements. Easy meet Kiev has just forgotten that it only has a few tanks in the contact line. But what is this? All heavy weapons of the Kiev army units taking part in the military operation in the southeastern Ukraine are currently in the settlements located within the 30 km buffer zone, which is a direct violation of the Minsk agreements, Defense Ministry spokesman of the Donetsk People's Republic, DPR Edward Basurin, told on Thursday. According to the DPR Defense Ministry, 47 Uragan and Grad multiple rocket launchers, a large number of MSTAB artillery pieces and Akasia self-propelled artillery systems have not been withdrawn from the zone. Ukrainian Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs Vadim Pistaiko believes that Ukrainian television broadcasting has to be restored in the territories of Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. Does he believe that Kiev has to implement the Minsk agreements? Withdraw tanks and heavy weapons? No. But Ukrainian TV has to be restored. The residents of Donbass suffer without Nazi and US brainwashing by the Ukrainian media. According to Reuters, Nazi Ukrainian battalion Azov, whose symbol resembles a black swastika on a yellow background, is preparing for more fighting in the eastern Ukraine. The 1,000-strong ultra-nationalist militia has a reputation as a fierce pro-government fighting force in the almost year-old conflict with the Russian-backed rebels in East Ukraine and is disdainful of peace efforts, Reuters article reads. Seems after the year of civil war, even blind-eye propagandists have found Nazis in Ukraine. The problem is that this fact hasn't prevented Reuters from justifying Kiev's Nazis. However, this is big progress. According to Western this media a few months ago, there were no Nazis in the Ukraine. The United States has followed double standards by providing support to Yemen's fleeing president and by denying it to Ukraine's former president, Viktor Yanukovych. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said, I have to use the hoary old cliche, the double standards are evident. Although we wanted neither the developments in the Ukraine nor the current events in Yemen, Lavrov told a news conference at the end of his visit to Guatemala. Russia's Foreign Minister is certain that the Ukraine crisis could have been avoided if, on February 22, 2014, Europe and the countries which were witness when the Ukrainian opposition sealed a deal with Yanukovych Yanukovych had exerted their influence and demanded immediate restoration of these agreements violated by the opposition afterwards.